Hello, thank you for the introduction. I'm Izin Chu, assistant professor in the U of A, U of Arbitra. This work is done when I was in Qatar Computing Research Institute with the QCRI researcher. Today, I will introduce our work, CIRAS, the Unified Framework to Aggregate the Threat Intelligence Report and Build a High Quality Ground Truth. So there are many types of internet threats such as malicious URLs, malware files, malicious IPs. Typically, these different types of internet threats are detected by different detectors such as the URL scanning service, antivirus engines, and the IP blacklist. However, the internet threats are fast evolving and the detectors need to constantly adapt to such fast evolving threats. The, uh, relying on the single source to get the good result is suboptimal because the performance will greatly depend on that single service. So we need to use the multiple services and aggregate the intelligence. There are many different services to aggregate intelligence sources. The virus total is one of such example and I will explain the context of the virus total but our approach can work for different services as well. In the virus total, Users can query the URL and the file to get the result from the 80 plus scanners the, about the decision of the maliciousness of the entities. Here, for example, Megafi say malicious and the Microsoft say benign. But these results from different scanners are often conflicting each other. So when we are having the conflicting labels, how can we decide, how can we aggregate this information to give the final judgment? Like we just ignore one of them or we just choose whatever we want? Most common approach to aggregate the intelligence sources is the threshold-based approach. Typically, we just use some number so that if there is certain number of scanners detect, then we consider it as a malicious. In fact, in the literature, the arbitrary number of threshold has been used as is in this table. Some of them use one, some of them one to five, some of them 10, for example. But there is no consensus on the appropriate threshold to define the uh, maliciousness. There are the trade-off between the threshold. High threshold may give the high precision, but low coverage. The low threshold may give the low precision and high coverage. Furthermore, uh, these threshold-based approaches typically assume all the intelligence sources are independent and they cannot deal with the different qualities and the different reliabilities. Traditionally, many supervised ma machine learning methods have been used for decades. However, these supervised approaches typically need a lot of manual annotation process, which require a lot of time-consuming cost and machine learning approaches are needed to be retraining every few hours for every few days to update for the fast evolving threats, which will add more and more manual annotation cost. Furthermore, traditional supervised learning approaches typically use the domain specific features and they are tailored to one type of threat. Instead, we propose a self-supervised learning approach that requires no or a small set of labels to aggregate the information, yet we achieve a high quality ground truth and early detection. 
Our approach is generic so that it can be applied to diverse threat types like uh, malware file, malicious URLs, malicious IPs. There are multiple challenges when we are aggregating the intelligence sources. I will go over one by one. First of all, different scanners are having different expertise. In the right figure shows that phishing URLs may be detected by the phishing scanners, but it will not be detected by the malware URL scanners. Malware URLs may be detected by the malicious URL scanner, but maybe not by the phishing scanners. Because of these different expertise, the scanner's performance will depend on each type of internet threat and in the left figure withdrawn from other paper that shows there are not many scanners who achieve good balance between the true positive rate and the false positive rate. Second, scanners are often known to flip their labels. So at time point one, it say malicious, at time point two, it say benign. Then depending on the time user collect the information from the scanner, it may end up different misleading decision. Third, early reports are typically less reliable. Scanners in the beginning time may not detect well and they will take time to reach the maximum accuracy. This figure shows that around five to 10 days it will take the scanners to detect. And that will be a problem when we have the zero day internet threats. Fourth, scanners are known to have high correlation. For example, here, IVS and the AVZ has showing the similar labels. But what if these similar scanners are having the poor performance? We are using the threshold-based approaches, and if we assume they are independent, we will take two as the detecting not malicious, for example, then it will give the misleading result. So our approach, CIRAS, is considering all of these challenges together with the self-supervised learning approach to deal with the diverse internet threat type. Our approach will generate the domain and the time invariant embeddings that will be used for the downstream task. So what is self-supervised learning? Because it is a new emerging area, let me explain a little bit with the context. Traditional supervised learning method has the bottleneck of the manual annotation process. Self-supervised learning approach basically wants to automate this process to generate the pseudo label while learning the properties of the data, but it does not use any label. We are just throwing the bunch of the unlabeled data. But because of learning process, it will be able to work really good. Typically, this is solved by solving the self-task called a pre-text text. So essentially, the self-supervised learning approach is working by the designing and the solving the pre-text test. Pre-test tasks should be relevant to the manual, and no, I mean the main task, but the labels should be easily collected. For example, let's assume that our goal is to uh, image classification. One of possible pretext tags would be image rotation prediction, which will be uh, pretty easy to collect. We can just rotate the images. We are training the model based on this pretext test, and the pre-trained encoder can be used for our main task and it will be used for the downstream task. This is the high level approach, I mean high level overview of our approach. We are taking the historical threat reports 
and we are training using the self-supervised learning approach, which will learn the properties of data. And during the fine-tuning step, we pass the new thread report and use the pre-trained encoder to generate the embedding, which will be domain invariant, and it will be used for the downstream test. So how can we design the pretext test? The important property of pretext test is supposed to be relevant to the main task, and it needs to be easily obtaining the labels. We carefully designed three pretext tests for our purpose, and that is the relevant to our main task to build a high quality ground truth by aggregating the intelligence sources, which consider all of these challenges we mentioned. Our goal is to design the generic free text test that can deal with diverse threat types. The embeddings from our model can be used for downstream tests. Let me go each of these free text tasks. The first pretext test is trying to uh, handle the high-level correlation I mentioned between the scanners. Essentially, it will learn the scanner's dependency. To do so, we mask or corrupt some of the entries from the scanner result, and then this model will try to identify which entries are masked or the corrupted, and which are the correct values for the mask or the corrupted values. Second pretext test is try to handle the early report which are unreliable and the flipping labels. This model will learn the temporal scanner dependencies. So we have the time series of the thread reports for the same entries for the scanner result. And basically, given the current label, we want to predict the future labels. Third pretext text is kind of regularizer of previous two pretext texts, so that it tried to ensure the representation between corrupted and the original and uh, future and the current label. This is learning in the way to maximize the similarity between the representation of the original versus corrupted and the current versus future labels. This figure shows our overall approach in detail. We first used the GEM model before the self-supervised learning, which will give some the dependence analysis for in the corpus level. And then using the self-supervised learning module, we pre-trained the encoder. And using that pre-trained encoder, the threat, new threat report will be passed over, and we are performing two downstream tasks, semi-supervised learning and uh, unsupervised learning. Semi-supervised learning task will take just a small set of labels, such as like 100. And unsupervised learning approach, we cluster the embeddings and then use the small cluster as the malicious. This table shows our data set we have used. The URLs are collected by ourselves and other uh, things are collected from the other papers. To show the generality of our approach, we use four different types of internet threats, phishing URLs, malware URLs, malware files, and the IP blacklist. We compare our approach with the four baseline approaches. One is the optimal threshold. Second is the supervised based approach with the deep neural network. Third is the unsupervised method using the EM-based model and forces the weak supervision model, detail of which can be found in the paper. 
So this figure shows our performance. We measure the F1 score with the different time report, and we perform the experiment for different type of internet thread, phishing URL, malware URLs, malware files, malicious IPs. As you can see, we can achieve the constantly high F1 score compared to other baseline approaches. Further, even using really early reports, we can achieve high F1 score. We are constant no matter which time point of report we are using. On the other hand, the other baseline approaches are having really low performance using the early reports. That's, the, that's because they do not consider such unreliability of early report. We use the different training set size as well. We are using the smallest as like 100 labels only and we are increasing the training size. As you can see, regardless of the training size, we can achieve the high F1 score constantly staying same, almost same, regardless of the training size. But other approaches are greatly depend on the training size, like they are having really low with the small data size. To wrap up, our proposed approach is the first self-supervised learning approach to aggregate the threat intelligence report. Our approach is the unified and the generic framework so that it can be used for diverse threat types, malware files, malicious URL, malicious IPs. And even our unsupervised approach can beat the previous baseline approaches, which is really good. Like using no label, we can still achieve the high F1 score. Um, thank you for listening, and this is end of my presentation. I will take the question. Thank you. <laughs> we have time for one quick question. Is there any question from the audience? Yeah, could you come to the mic? Hi, sorry if I missed it. Uh, when you do the uh, segregation for training and uh, analysis, do you have uh, what timeline do you use? Is it on a daily basis, or there is a historic uh, data that goes in the? So analysis? we are using different scale, and if you see here, we are using like a six hours of data for the fishing URL, for example, and then twelve hour. 24 hours, et cetera. We are changing until like uh, one week so that we are showing the performance depending on the report age. Right. Yeah. That's good, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>